Hey guys, Greg Mercer from Jungle Scout here. I'm joined by Kevin David from That Lifestyle Ninja today. By the end of today's episode, you guys are gonna know exactly how to set up Amazon PPC campaigns from scratch that will be successful for years to come. So that being said, Kevin, what do you think? Let's get started. Let's do it, guys. So I'm going to share my screen, guys. We are not gonna do anything high level today. Uh, Greg and I are really going to take you literally inside of one of Greg's accounts. Um, he's been kind enough to share it. Um, and we're gonna do this as if it's completely from scratch. So we're not going to use any of his search term report data. We are going to build these campaigns as if there was literally no data. This was a brand new product, right? And you can replicate these same methods no matter what your product is. So the, the product that we're gonna be looking over today is called Jungle Sticks. And if you follow Greg, you're probably Probably familiar with it. Um, I was familiar with it when I was reading when I was uh, you know reading Greg's blog so many months ago. And um, we are going to rebuild these. So the first thing that I like to do is use a website called Merchant Words. And so if you're going to be selling you know marshmallow sticks, they have many different names. And so it's important to kind of recognize the fact that not everyone calls the same product the same thing. And so we're going to go in really quickly and do marshmallow sticks in here. And we're going to see what we we're going to see what we find. Right, so we see 191,000 estimated monthly search volume for this. And guys, for all of these Amazon uh, keyword services, it's important to note that these are estimates, right? And so you can't bet your bottom dollar on the fact that there's this many searches. The only true source of actual search volume monthly is using the uh, search engines, right? So you can go to Google Keyword Planner, another free service, and they can give you the real data from that. So we are going to do a couple of things. The first thing that I like to do um, is build out what I call a master list for PPC. So we're going to start downloading some CSVs, right? So we're going to download a CSV that contains all of these different Amazon searches, right? Because this is really pivotal when it comes to keyword research. And you guys will see why um, we do build one master list. It helps with a few other advanced strategies that we are going to do down the line. So one of the ways that I like to kind of brainstorm what um, other names people might call the same products, right? Because not everyone calls this marshmallow sticks. Some people call them, you know, hot dog sticks, or campfire sticks or bamboo sticks, right? There's a bunch of different ways that you can refer to the same thing. And so what I like to do is take kind of the highest volume keyword here, which is, you know, marshmallow roasting sticks. And so I will copy and paste that and then just bring it into a normal Amazon window. And there's some stuff that we can sell here, right? Because Amazon, like Google, is very, very good at organizing data, right? And so when they're organizing data, we see that, you know, and if the reason I'm ignoring these top few is because they're sponsored, right? So the number one organic result, we can have a lot of confidence that Amazon feels is the most relevant product or one of the most relevant products for this highest volume search. Right, and what we see here is that we see marshmallow roasting sticks is prominently the first in their title right after their brand, but they also have s'more kit. They also have perfect campfire accessories, right? They also have bamboo skewers. So then we can come back into merchant words and we can try typing some of these other ones, right? Like bamboo sticks and see what we see. And we do see, right, 144,000. So we're gonna download this one. Um, and now all of a sudden we have two completely different sets of keywords that both are going to be hyper relevant for the specific term. And, um, you know, maybe we're going to type in some more kit. And do you have anything you want to add to this? This is kind of how I like to start my, my keyword research, Greg, but um, feel free. I think this is really good. I, I'm just going to add in real quickly that if you guys are overwhelmed by like PPC, because it's the first time you're getting started, just know that um, setting up PPC campaigns on Amazon is very easy to do. It's like the most simple PPC cam, like uh, PPC platform out there. Okay, all you do is you find keywords that are relevant for your product, or you think you might um, uh, get sales through, and you just bid on them. Okay, and we'll we'll cover all this for by detail. But I just I just want to say that because like that's why we're starting out with this keyword research, and that's kind of why this is like step one for creating these PPC campaigns. Right, exactly. And we are going to go over exactly how to actually set it up literally in the PPC portion of Amazon. So don't feel overwhelmed at all. Greg and I are going to walk you through every single step of the way, right? So we did bamboo sticks, we did marshmallow sticks, we did s'more kits. Now we're going to do bamboo skewers. Um, we're going to try to find one more. I like to generally have about five different um, CSVs. I accidentally downloaded that one twice. So these are the four right here. And then let's try to find one more keyword that we might not have represented right now, right? So maybe we could do something with campfire, stainless steel s'mores, oh, hot dog. Maybe, maybe let's do hot dog sticks and see if there's anything for that. Hot dog sticks, because you know a lot of people are using these to cook hot dogs. 
Um, and so it's not a ton here, but you know, we'll take it anyways and we'll, we'll use these five. Right, and so the next thing that I like to do is kind of aggregate these all into one uh, master spreadsheet. Because once you kind of build out one master spreadsheet, it's much easier to keep things organized. So um, we are going to use this one as our master spreadsheet. So that we just downloaded that first CSV. I'm going to grab the second one here, open it up, and I'm just going to take all of the keywords from this second document, and I'm going to paste them into this master. And so we're going to do this, you know, three more times until we have all of the different uh, keyword charts represented. And once we have kind of that master list, then we can really start to use, you know, some, some uh, tools and software and little tricks and hacks that we've picked up over the years to kind of organize this data in a way that sets our products ahead. All right. So it's the fourth one and this final one. And guys, it's important to note too that, you know, when you are doing keyword research in this way, you're not only doing it for uh, PPC, right? There, everything or a lot of things with Amazon are kind of interconnected. So it's important to remember that when you're doing this keyword research for PPC, you're also doing keyword research for your backend keywords. You're also doing keyword research for your, ti your title, for your bullet points, right? So you kind of, you have to get to know and love your product and know, you know, all the different ways people are searching and finding your product. And once you kind of understand exactly how people are getting, you know, to your product, to your competitors, that is when you can start, you know, really ramping up your PPC. So this is the master keyword list from Merchant Words. Um, before we kind of go into how we're actually going to, you know, manipulate this data, um, I like to show. I'm, I'd like to show a couple more little tricks that I like to use as far as you know keyword research. So this is um, our Merchant Words list. So we're just going to call this MW. Um, we're going to open up a new tab here. And let's go on to a little tool in um, AMS. So AMS, for those of you who don't know, is Amazon Marketing Services. Um, it is kind of Amazon PPC, uh, you know, except a little bit more souped up. Oh, actually, before we go to AMS, I do want to show one more thing. I don't know how, how you do this, Greg, and I'd actually be interested to know, but um, one of the cool like little tricks that I've picked up over the years um, is basically to use um, misspelling generators, right? So if we, if we type in marshmallow sticks here, um, and we can, you know, go in a number of different countries and we search it. So what this is, is basically an aggregation of, of thousands or millions of different searches on eBay over the years that have been misspelled. So it sorts these misspellings by the most common. So what we can do is grab, you know, the first five or 10 of these, um, right? Cause you don't, you know, you don't need to do all of them. Cause if you, if you put like a thousand misspellings, Amazon's not going to give you any impressions, but if we take the top 10 most popular, then we can, you know, throw these into a misspellings um, chart. And once we have these, um, then we can run misspelling campaigns for these most uh, common misspellings. And so, you know, you can do this with all of your different keywords, whether it's marshmallow sticks, whether it's bamboo skewers, right? And take the top 10 misspellings for all of your most highest uh, highest volume keywords, and then you can run misspelling campaigns where you're going to get, you know, it's not going to change your life or anything like that, but you will get a few very, very low cost sales every month. And so really there's no reason to do it when it takes like five minutes to set up. So now we're going to move on to AMS. So hey, AMS, Kevin, before you do that, I'm just going to add something real quick that yeah, technically like Amazon is supposed to correct for these misspellings. Um, I think they even say that they do so. So I think a lot of people don't set up these misspelling campaigns, but I actually had had have had success with these before. Um, some of them are more successful than others, but they're a good thing just to try. And then later on when we show you how to optimize these, you know, if things aren't performing well, you can always adjust bids or pause them. Right. No, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, just because people out there are saying, you know, Amazon corrects for this, they won't give you any impressions, like do it anyways, right? What's the worst that can happen? You just don't get impressions and you don't get sales, right? And so I've also tested um, Spanish keywords for some of my really highest, highest volume keywords, right? Because there's, there's a large Hispanic population that uses Amazon um, in the United States, right? So test things out because the whole point of PPC and optimizing and iterating these things into success is by running a bunch of experiments. That's how, you know, I figured it out in the beginning. I'm sure that's how Greg figured it out in the beginning. So um, this 
is Amazon Marketing Services. Um, there's three different types of ads here. We are going to focus on sponsored products and headline search for now. So sponsored products basically allows you to show your ad in kind of a more prominent way than a uh, normal PPC allows. So anyone can sign up for AMS. Uh, AMS. You can do like you can do it through Vendor Express, right? I teach exactly how to do that um, in my course. I think I have a video on YouTube as well, um, going over how you can get AMS, but it's not too difficult. Um, and they have some really cool tools that you can't really find anywhere else as far as keyword research. So what I like to do here is um, I search marshmallow sticks, marshmallow roasting sticks, right? Because this this is generally our their highest volume. There's 191,000. Um, monthly searches. We're going to skip these two sponsored and go to the organic position one uh, product listing. And so we, when we open this, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the ASIN. So the ASIN usually begins with B01, but it can look different, right? You can find it in uh, the URL usually after the slash DT, uh, DP, which stands for a detailed page. Um, so we're going to grab the ASIN, head over to sponsored products, and we're going to paste it here, right? And so when we paste it here, something cool happens. So even though this isn't our product, Amazon is assuming that no one would advertise and spend their own money to advertise other people's products, right? So it actually gives you keywords from Amazon, right? This is Amazon data. This is not an estimate. This is not, uh, you know, how other services like Merchant Words like are making estimations and giving you approximations and permutations of the autofill feature uh, of search. This is true. Amazon data from the source, right? And so when we scroll down, you can put anything for the campaign name and the budget, right? Because we're not actually creating it right now. All we're doing is actually looking at the keywords. So it gives you suggested keywords when you choose a manual targeting campaign. And this is amazing, right? Because we did not ever type into Merchant Words campfire roasting sticks. Um, we never typed s'mores skewers. We never typed bonfire. Uh, we never typed, right, blazing sticks or any of these, right? So what we're gonna do is we are going to grab all of these keywords because you know, look at this, this is a ton of stuff that we wouldn't have otherwise had. Um, and so we're gonna grab all of these quickly and we're gonna open up our master spreadsheet and we're gonna add a new tab and we're gonna call this AMS1. Right, because there is gonna be a second way that we can use AMS to get us um, some really valuable keywords. And so we're just gonna paste these in here or we're gonna try and see if it lets us. Yeah, okay, so, and we're going to, we don't really need these two uh, columns. And so now we have a ton more stuff to work with, right? And so um, the more keywords and the more, you know, different permutations of long tails that you can potentially capture, um, the wider uh, spread of potential, you know, keywords you're going to actually be showing for and winning ad auctions for and getting sales for. So. Um, if, do you have anything you want to add to that, Greg? No, that's really good. I think this is a good hack that most people don't um, know about. And I'll just repeat this real quick because uh, Kevin said it real uh, pretty quickly earlier. You don't automatically have access to AMS um, just because you're using Seller Central. But him and ourselves, we both created a video on how to do it. And we'll include some of those links in the description below. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. And so then that is kind of how you use what is called um, the sponsored products, right? You can put... And it doesn't have to just, just be one person, right? I could go back and maybe I could type in um, another one of ours, right? Maybe I could type in bamboo sticks because we know that one is also highly, um, has a high volume. And look, here we see jungle sticks. That looks like an awesome company. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, we can take, okay, so blazing sticks is actually first organic here too, but we could grab, uh, you know, another one of these that is uh, very close to it plug it back in in the exact same way in the sponsored products and start to build even more and more keywords. So we're not gonna show that again because we just showed it, but let's move on to the next way, right? So headline search is another way that people use AMS very successfully to do keyword research. And what this is one of the coolest like little hacks that I've actually come across, right? So when you're in headline search, um, what you can do actually is use Amazon's autofill PPC box. So what this is, is, um, you know, we can go and we can try to surmise what we think the most relevant and highest volume are, right? So we know it's bamboo sticks, we know it's marshmallow roasting sticks, but what about like campfire sticks or hot dog sticks, right? Those are a little bit harder to know exactly what people are searching. And so what this does is actually takes out kind of the ambiguity and the guess and tells you, right? So if we search bamboo, all of a sudden, we see straight from Amazon, not only, you know, all of these different words, but they also give us the amount of traffic associated with these words, right? So bamboo S 
is sheets, right? We could do K for skewers. And then all of a sudden we have these long tail keywords that are the, you know, the number of inches. And just because somebody is searching for a bamboo, boor, uh, excuse me, a bamboo skewer that is six inches. If you see, if they see a beautiful listing and yours happens to be eight inches, they aren't going to, you know, necessarily just ignore yours because it's two inches longer. Right. And so it's very important to have as much representation for all of these long tail keywords as we can get. Right. So we're going to type in bamboo, um, we're gonna type in bamboo sticks and see what we see here. So we see decorative, we see fake, right? Bamboo sticks for plants, for vase. These are things that I would never have, you know, thought of. Uh, you know, when I'm when I in my brain, the bamboo sticks are for you know marshmallows. They're for uh, you know hot dogs, cooking at camping and things like that. So and then we could do camping sticks for s'mores, for hot dogs, cooking, right? And so, and then here's a misspelling that they have. So we're gonna add all of those. And you know, we could do, uh, what are some other ones we should try, Greg? Uh, some of the, the hot dog terms or- um... Hot dog sticks, extra long for fire pit, for campfire adult, right? These are great keywords, guys. Cause the more words you have, I've found in my, in my experience, if you have a, you know, a long tail phrase, that's three words, four words, five words, or even more than five words, those are where you get the incredibly cheap PPC sales, right? Because no one is competing on the word hot dog sticks for campfire adult, right? That's a six that's a six string uh, keyword phrase. There's, I can guarantee you that that is going to be a lower bid than bamboo skewers, right? And so we're gonna add all of these ones. And then we could do s'mores. Do s'mores, yeah. S'mores kit, maker, sticks for fire pit. Um, let's do s'mores ST. Yeah, so wooden for kids, bulk. And then we could do s'mores again, but with the apostrophe. We could do s'mores as K for skewers. And I mean, you know, we could do this all day. And, and the more and more words that you collect, the more and more profitable that your PPC campaigns are going to be. So we can, you know, we just took a bunch of those keywords. And so we're going to add these in to our, wow. We're gonna add these into our spreadsheet as AMS. Two. And so once we kind of have all of these keywords, then we can start to think about, okay, how do we want to populate our back end? Um, and what I mean by our back end keywords is literally the keywords that you put into a product listing in the back end that Amazon is using to index. And what I mean by index is show your actual product when people search, um, you know, specific keyword phrases. As we saw, we saw Greg's product show up, right? And that's because he's indexing for those keywords and um, Amazon has deemed his product relevant for those phrases that his uh, product does show organically for, right? <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so one of the ways that we uh, do this, and you know, I actually just learned this from Greg, so I was doing it a different way, but I actually um, do appreciate the way that he does it a little bit better, um, <clears throat> is, we want to figure out what the most relevant single words are, right? Because in your backend keywords, you don't have to repeat words. Amazon makes it very clear that you only have to put them once and Amazon's A9 algorithm will actually do the heavy lifting for you and kind of formulate the permutations and the different long tail phrases from your single word list. And so what we're gonna do is this master list that we made of um, merchant word keywords, right? This is the longest one. There's like, you know, 1500 uh, different keywords here. We're gonna copy all of these and we're gonna to come to a website called Word Counter. And um, Greg, do you wanna kind of explain why, why exactly we're using Word Counter? Yeah, so this is a good kind of indicator of like which words are essentially, which keywords are the most important for you, right? So um, the ones after he hits go, we see at the top is like stick, then bamboo, then marshmallow, then roast. These are like the most and probably the most important words to have even in your title or even towards the beginning of your title. And then everything here that's mentioned like, you know, more than one time, um, which is all of them, these should all be keywords somewhere in your listing or your backend search terms. Otherwise, um, you're not going to be, uh, you're likely not going to be indexed for these particular words. Absolutely. And, you know, with the 250 character update that uh, Amazon did roll out, right? So if, if you guys haven't heard of that uh, before, you could have, you know, 
a ton more back in keywords, but people were kind of manipulating it and keyword stuffing and just like putting a bunch of random stuff that wasn't particularly relevant to their specific product. And so what Amazon did was they limited um, your back end characters that you are allowed to actually be indexed for to 250 characters, right? And so what this method does is it really shows you, you know, if there's 1500 different words, all with a bunch of volume that you're getting from merchant words, from AMS, from Google Keyword Planner, from keyword.io, right? From all these different keyword services, um, it's very difficult to tell which of these are most targeted and most relevant then we'll give you the highest chance of being indexed for phrases that include these words right and so what we're gonna do then is we would just take 250 characters of out of you know these top most searched words right because it tells us the frequency right here um, and we're going to plug those into our back end and feel very comfortable doing so and that Amazon is going to actually deem our listings relevant um, and so what you want to do kind of once we're here, right, we have all of these different keywords, right? We have misspellings. We have AMS one from the sponsored. We have AMS two from the headline, um, all from actual Amazon data is we are going to actually build out some of these uh, campaigns. And so one last thing that I want to note just while we're here, right, is that, um, as Greg mentioned, right, we want to have representation for all of these hyper relevant keywords in our listing and it needs to be in one of a few places, right? It needs to be in your title or it needs to be in your keywords or it needs to be in your back end, right? So your most relevant, most, uh, you know, uh, giving you the highest click through rate and sales rate and things like that. You want those to be in your title. Your title holds the most weight as far as what Amazon is indexing you for. And so once you kind of have some data to look at from your search term report after you get some um, sales from uh, PPC, then you can actually really iterate your title. And we will go over that when Greg leads uh, the discussion about optimizing PPC campaigns once we are back onto my channel. So <clears throat> if you guys are interested, make sure that you do catch part two because um, it's going to be Greg leading it and it's going to be very good, right? And so one of the things we're gonna do is actually get started. So. Okay, so we are in the campaign manager. So in the advertising menu, we're gonna to go to campaign manager and then we're gonna to go to create campaign. And so when we create campaign, we can kind of do two different things here. And you wanna be specific, right? So we are going to set up a uh, manual, we're gonna set up a jungle sticks, right? So depending on how many products you have, you wanna be specific here because you'll just thank yourself when you have a ton of different products and you're looking at all of these different um, things uh, in your search term report and you just like to stay organized. So jungle sticks, manual, we're gonna do phrase match and we're gonna set the daily budget to, you know, maybe a hundred and nine dollars a day. I like to use a little bit random of numbers, right? And it depends what you're actually doing. So I go over this in detail um, in my channel and in my course, it's a little bit more complicated, but um, if you have proven keywords, right? Or you're using a low bid keyword, uh, you know, some of the more advanced uh, tactics, I'll even set my budget to crazy stuff. Like I'll set it to like literally like $4,000 a day, just because Amazon won't actually spend that much but they will um, give you more impressions, but you have to be very careful. It's more of an advanced tactic. And you know, if you are new to this, definitely, you know, you can start out even with like 20 or $50 a day, right? So we're gonna put a hundred to $9 a day. We're gonna start it now and end date never, right? And so the first thing uh, that I wanna talk about really quick right here is the difference between automatic and manual targeting. So automatic targeting uh, goes back to what we, Greg and I were just discussing, right? Why it's so important to have representation of these you know super relevant keywords somewhere in your listing because what automatic targeting does is it kind of <clears throat> combs through your listing and scrapes all of the keywords out of your title out of your back end out of your uh, bullet points and then it creates um, PPC campaigns for you right so Amazon kind of does all the work for you um, in my experience automatic is generally less profitable than manual just because you can really get more creative with manual you can test things yourself um, you can play around with bid prices and stuff like that. Um, what have you What have you found, Greg, between automatic and manual? Which Which is better? Yeah, so automatic's good for starting out for a product if you've never had it before, because it gives you a good insight of what Amazon thinks about your product. Um, some real customer search terms, even without having to input keywords or anything like that. After some time, generally most people will stop their automatic campaigns or put like a lower daily budget because you can't optimize for certain search terms um, inside of there. Amazon just chooses which search terms they think are relevant for your product and they just use your overall bid for all those words, even though like some of these words might not be converting well. Right. 
Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we're not going to actually go over automatic targeting just because, you know, literally all you do is click this and press continue to the next step, choose your product. And that's it, right? There's no, there's no creativity. There's no, um, you know, research really involved aside from building your listing correctly. Right. But one trick that I do want to just quickly mention for automatic uh, targeting that I have found to work is, um, actually spreading out your automatic campaigns. And what I mean by that is, you know, instead of making one automatic campaign with a hundred dollars per day, I will instead make 10 automatic campaigns with $10 a day. And let me explain why, right? Because how Amazon determines whether or not they're going to give you more impressions is based on the initial impression. So if you show your ad to a hundred people and zero people buy, Amazon says, okay, this isn't relevant. And they completely cut you off, give you no more impressions, right? And you aren't going to be able to actually get sales from your automatic campaigns. But sometimes um, your automatic campaigns will choose different random keywords to show these people first. And so out of that same hundred people, maybe they choose a different keyword and 10 people buy. And then all of a sudden Amazon's seeing right a 10% conversion rate and they're going to say, okay, this is relevant. We're going to show this to a bunch more people. And so you'll see maybe like two or three out of the 10 campaigns being very successful as far as profitability. You'll see two or three of them maybe um, are not profitable, right? They're, they're spending too much without, without enough sales. And you'll see maybe four or five that have just no impression right because they were deemed not relevant so what you do there is you scale the ones that are profitable right to kind of piggyback off that initial momentum you you know downgrade or lower the bids of the um, you know, non-profitable automatic campaigns and then you can just pause the ones that aren't working so um, that's just a little trick that I've kind of picked up <clears throat> I'll just add in something real quick people always wonder a question about um, can you uh, like compete against yourself and the answer is no so like if you have the exact same keyword, you know, in 10 different spots, you're not driving up the bid in all those different uh, campaigns. Right. And Amazon actually goes over this specifically. They have a little section in AMS where um, they, they, sh they show you exactly how they, they prevent um, duplicate bids. Um, it's basically just if you have the exact same bid price, they'll choose one at random. Um, and so you can go over to AMS and read on it if you want. But uh, like, like Greg said, he's exactly right. You are not going to bid against yourself. So we're going to name this ad group uh, manual merchant words one, manual phrase merchant words one. And we select uh, bamboo, marshmallows, s'mores, roasting sticks. And the default bid here, um, you can kind of put whatever you want because I have a little trick that I'm going to show you guys how I like to, um, you know, actually show the ad to as many people as possible, but spend the least amount of money doing it. So we're going we're gonna to go over exactly how to do that. So, excuse me. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come back into this spreadsheet and we're going to do a little filtering. So if we filter here and then we actually filter on volume by descending order, then we're really going to actually be able to see which of these keywords kind of have the most monthly searches. And so what I like to do is I, I don't like to put more than, um, you know, 50 to a hundred different keywords in one campaign, because if you, you know, if you put a thousand keywords in one, in one campaign, you'll notice that Amazon, or at least in my experience, Amazon will give you basically no impression. So do you, do you have a rule of thumb here, Greg, for how many different keywords you put in one campaign? No, I usually load it up quite a bit, but there are times that I can't figure out why certain words are getting impressions. So that might be why. So yeah, yes. I, I mean, and you know, it generally, um, is a little bit easier to like fine tune campaigns if you don't have like a thousand, I think they allow 999 words, but like, like it's pretty overwhelming to like fine tune those uh, if a lot of those are getting impressions. Yeah, so I generally like to stick to under a hundred here. So we're gonna do uh, 99 keywords we're gonna take and you know, we can mark it, we can, we can cut it if you want to make sure that you remember, um, you know, where you kind of left off on your last one. Um, and we're going to change the match type to phrase, right? And so the difference between a uh, broad phrase and exact match is basically what specificity a Amazon customer needs to, you know, type their search term into the Amazon search bar for your ad to show. So let's give an example here. Like if, you know, let's say you're selling a garlic press and you're advertising for the word garlic, right? And so if you choose broad match there, then somebody could literally type, you know, stainless steel, pink, extra large garlic press, right? And so like a super long tail keyword, but since your match type was so broad for the word garlic, you can show for all of these different phrases, right? So you're gonna be shown a lot more. It's generally gonna be more expensive, right? Because you're getting in front of more people and it's going to generally uh, at times be less profitable because you know, you're not as targeted 
or who you're showing it to, right? And so then if you choose phrase, um, if let's say that you, you, you know, you're advertising for the word, maybe you have like a travel sized garlic press and you choose that as your, um, you know, your PVC term that you're actually advertising for, then all of a sudden, you know, if they typed garlic, you would not show for that because you are phrase matching, right? Only someone who types, you know, almost basically your exact phrase, right? Travel size garlic press. Um, only your ad is going to be shown for that person, which means that you know that they're very interested because they're typing in exactly what you're advertising for, which you know should be exactly what your product is, and then you're gonna get more low cost sales. So I generally like to play around with phrase. Um, I found phrase to be the most profitable of the three, but when you're first starting a, a listing and you're doing a new keyword research, right? I do like to play around with, with broad as well. Um, Greg, do you want to give kind of your input on, on how you like to, you know, kind of progress through the three match types? Yeah. So there's no right or wrong answer here. Um, I do it a little bit different than Kevin does. Um, so actually like when I'm starting a brand new campaign, I'll take the same keywords and I'll put them, well, like one, I started an automatic campaign. We already kind of talked about that. It's super easy. We don't even need to demo it. But then I'll take the same keywords and do broad match, phrase match, and exact match. And like I said, there's no wrong or right way. Like you could do it either way and it'd be fine. Um, sometimes there are words that will perform better. Like in general, like broad is probably more expensive, but sometimes there are certain words and that's what we're looking for that perform better in broad or certain ones that do perform better um, in exact. But uh, just to try to add on to uh, the match typing case you still don't quite understand like um so broad match like we'll use the word marshmallow sticks because that's our example here broad match can have as many words and whatever words um before marshmallow after sticks or in between marshmallow and sticks okay it also um accounts for misspellings as well as um like the plurals or um uh, yeah with phrase match, it has to be the words like marshmallow sticks. They have to be together. You can't put words in between there. Otherwise it won't show exact match. There can't be words before it, after it, or in between. It has to be that exact phrase. It has to just be marshmallow sticks, but it would also show for like marshmallow stick, the non-plural version or um, a misspelling it's supposed to show for as well. Right. Yeah. And that, that's a really, that's a really important point, which you made at the beginning, right? Because you know, it, even even the experts out there like Greg and you know myself and other people you can't really it's impossible to know sometimes and predict no matter how well you know the algorithm no matter how well you know PPC sometimes I'll run you know a, a broad phrase and exact and my broad match exact same word will be performing a hundred times better than the exact same word as phrase and so you know <clears throat> the, the moral of the story there is not you know not to get overwhelmed it's just to test Right. It's, it's the same thing with anything. Like when I'm creating my Facebook advertising campaigns, you know, I'm creating hundreds of split tests on demographics, on age groups, on gender, on location, on all these different things. Right. So the more you test in Amazon PPC, the more you're going to be rewarded. Right. It's constant iteration, looking at what's performing and increasing, you know, money towards that, looking at what is, you know, may maybe a little bit less profitable and taking money or pausing those campaigns. Right. And so then all we have to do here to finish this off is just add these keywords. Um, there might've been a few duplicates, which is why uh, we got this error. So there's only 96 instead of 99. And so then we just save and finish. And it's as easy as that. Right. And so the last thing that I want to go over really quickly is kind of how to set those bids. Right. Because when we, when we went in, um, we didn't actually set the bid. We just put it to something random like 150, which I think a lot of people put 75 cents just because Amazon shows that. And so one little trick that we can do here is coming into the keywords section and we can actually highlight all of these. So it only highlights 50 out of the 96. So we'll have to go to page two, but a cool little hack that I like to use is using Amazon's data. So if we see here suggested bid, right, are calculated from a group of winning bids for ads that are similar to yours, right? So this is basically the cheapest price you can possibly pay to Amazon to win the ad auction and have your ad shown, right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go a little bit farther than what um, you know a lot of people are doing because they're probably just applying suggested bid, right? 84 cents and they're calling it a day, right? But there's probably multiple people who are doing this. And so one little thing that we can do to kind of stay one step ahead is we can come in here and we can go to adjust bid. And then if we increase the bid percentage by, you know, 1.1%, right? Or even 1% or 2% or whatever you wanna do, right? If we can increase it by 1%, that's literally like an extra cent, but now we are just above 
our competitors what they're bidding on um, you know these same keywords and so we're gonna win the bid we're gonna win the ad auction and our ad is going to show and we're only spending one extra cent in most cases to actually do that and just real quick I'll just talk about the ad auction uh, real quick because I know this is like a common point of kind of confusion so keep in mind that the bids that we put in here that's not necessarily what we're gonna be charged per click and in Amazon uh, sponsored products you're not charged for impressions, you're only charged for clicks. And um, Amazon, I, I don't think like fully releases how the, like, the ad auction specifically works, but like in general, how it works is um, you'll pay pretty much like the price that's like just a hair, let's like say a cent or a few cents over what like your next competitor is to have to be put in that placement um, if it's clicked. So if Kevin and I were bidding on the same keywords, he puts uh, his bid in there as 85 cents and I put in there 90 cents, then I should get charged like 86 cents um, if someone clicks me uh, in the top spot. It's not quite that clear cut because they, uh, we have done some tests and, and everyone kind of like knows that there are some other things that go into account. But like I said, Amazon doesn't release all of that, but you can kind of assume it's um they prefer like exact match over phrase match over broad match. And um, they likely take into account like the conversion rate of your listing, uh, potentially some keyword relevancy type stuff too. But unfortunately there's not like too much you can do like do to adjust that like when you're setting up PPC at least. Right. Yeah, and uh, you know, just to kind of summarize, because we've, we've gone over a number of different things, right? And everyone kind of has their own way. The way that I personally like to do this is, you know, I'll get an automatic campaign set up, right? It takes two seconds after I build out my beautifully optimized listing and Amazon kind of does the work, right? I monitor it closely. Um, and, you know, after two days, right? One thing that I do want to note is um, that the sales data takes 48 hours to actually process, right? And so I have, you know, students all the time who come to me and say, Kevin, I, I've spent $500 on PPC, but I have zero sales, right? And, I was, and I'll say, okay, how long has it been since you started your campaign? And they'll be like an hour or like five hours or whatever, right? And so it says really right here, your sales data can take 48 hours to populate. So it's very important not to panic right? But at the same time, it's important to watch your campaigns closely, right? And make sure that you're not, nothing crazy is happening or anything like that. Um, and so kind of just to summarize, when I create a brand new listing, I'll get an automatic campaign set up and then I'll do, you know, what Greg, what Greg talked about um, a little bit differently, how, how I prefer to do it. I'll take kind of my 99 um, top words here uh, based on volume, and I would do the same thing for um, my AMS list. I would do the same thing for my AMS too, right? But we're just not gonna repeat it over and over again because it is the same process. Uh, I would take my 99 most uh, highest volume keywords and I would run a broad match campaign and I would run a phrase match campaign for those exact same keywords and I would let those kick off, right? Me personally, I don't ever run exact match campaigns until I have proven data, right? And we are going to talk about this more next time uh, when we do optimize, but this is the search term report. So this is real sales data, the one true source of a real sales data that you can get from Amazon. It comes from PPC. It's called the search term report. Greg is going to go over this in detail, so don't be overwhelmed by this, but it tells you, like this is the customer search term, exactly what they searched to get us a sale, right? Um, and so we're gonna talk about this a ton, how to optimize exactly, how to optimize all of your campaigns to make sure that they're, you know, you're cutting all the losers, you're boosting money to all the winners and increasing your profit as much as you possibly can. So that is how we do keyword research, guys. That is how we set up a manual campaign. And that is kind of the thought process behind getting a brand new product off the ground from a PPC perspective. All right, and so next, what we're gonna do is Kevin's gonna set up these campaigns today. Um, we're going to come back in about a week. We'll post that video over on Kevin's YouTube channel and the link will be in the description below. And you can follow along with me as I optimize these campaigns. We'll see how they're performing. We'll see what's working, what's not working, how we take all that data that Amazon gives us to then make winning campaigns. So I think a lot of people get frustrated, you know, like these first few weeks, like, man, my, you know, my ACoS is over a hundred percent. These aren't profitable. PPC doesn't work for me. It's like, it will work for you. It just takes time to optimize these. We need data from Amazon. We need to, um, you know, double down on what's working, cut the losers. And then from that, uh, we, you know, like every product I'm confident can have, you know, successful and profitable PPC campaigns. You just have to learn how to optimize them correctly.
Right. And, you know, how to optimize correctly and also how to be kind of creative and get some of those longer tail phrases that other people are ignoring. Right. Because those are essentially the low hanging fruit that give you those super, super cheap PPC sales and will give you kind of the organic rank. Because something one last point that I want to talk about, right, is people will say, hey, you know, I'm doing PPC, but I'm just breaking even on it. I'm, you know, my profit margin is 40 percent. My A cost, my my cost of PPC is 40 percent. Right. And so, you know, I, I'm not going to recommend the, that you go out there and, you know, do extremely expensive PPC campaigns, but one indirect benefit of PPC that a lot of people don't mention is the fact that, you know, when you actually get a sale for a PPC term, so let's take this example. So if we get a sale for um, bamboo marshmallow roasting sticks, right? So this is kind of a longer one, four words. Amazon is going to say, okay, a customer typed in bamboo marshmallow roasting sticks and then bought your product, right? And so when you get click-through rates and you get conversions for these keywords, you are getting organic rank for these keywords. So then maybe if, if 10 people type this in and click your PPC ad, all of a sudden your organic listing, right? The beauty of Amazon FBA in the end is that you don't have to market 100% of your you know, traffic. Like Shopify, you have to send everyone from Facebook. You have to drive that traffic. The beauty of Amazon FBA is organic sales, right? And so when you get these PPC sales, you'll start to rank organically for these terms. And when you rank organically for these terms you know, high enough, then you're going to get free sales, which is you know, essentially where you're trying to get with PPC and with all of these ranking methodologies. Fantastic. Kevin, thank you very much for walking us through that. Since you guys stayed all the way to the end, make sure to hit the subscribe button below so you're notified about further um, upcoming uh, webinars and all the other content we produce to help you as Amazon sellers. And then go ahead and click the link below to hop over to Kevin's channel so you can see how we optimize these PPC campaigns after we collect a week's worth of data. So see you there. All right, guys. See you then.